be citrusy. So, yeah, it's not bad. Love that song. Yeah, it's 70s porno music. And welcome back to another episode of Stories from the Shed. My name is Adam. And again with me this week is a man who was surprised when he learned that the movie Deep Throat wasn't a documentary about whales. Jake, how's it going? I didn't even know that movie existed. (laughs) I'm learning all kinds of new things today. Lies, Jake. Lies. What do you mean? (laughs) What up? What's up, man? How you doing? Oh, living the life. The you shed life. Goes. Yeah, exactly. This is better than the work life. That's right. That's for damn sure. The play life. Yeah, exactly. How was your week? It was good. It was good. It was slow. I didn't have to do shit at work. It was awesome. I didn't do a goddamn thing. I'm going to skip my week and we'll bring on our guest. I take it your week was horrible. <laughs> it, was, it sucked. It was, uh, all right, then. Good. You know, it was, it was a rough week. Jason, what's up, man? Uh, not much. Happy to be back. Welcome back. Thanks. What brings you back uh, from taking a, you know, what makes you to take a break from Uber and, and coming back to the shed? Ah, uh, we got you a story took, tonight. You took my joke. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> we have a story tonight about Megan Gregory that we both know quite a bit about, so we decided to uh, to come on again. See, but one, uh, I think we've all been kind of reading up on it, the three of us, all week, so it's been kind of interesting because it's been in the news recently, huh, uh, uh, Jake? Yeah, and it's funny. We started talking about doing this episode, and then all of a sudden they find her. Which yeah. is cool, but it kind of it kind of threw us off, so we had to kind of you know reposition. Well, that's that. You got the end of the podcast there. The final. <laughs> yep. Let's go home. Good night, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so uh, before we get going, uh, we're drinking Allagash White. This is a delicious Belgian style wheat beer brewed, I believe, in Portland, Portland, Maine. Portland, yeah. Maine. Very good. From Maine, with love. We, yes. Independent very good. brewers since 1995. Yes. Very good stuff. Check them out. Uh, I could have a few of these. <laughs> Please recycle the cans when you're done. Of course, of course, yeah. Don't litter. I'm gonna give this one a. Seems like I give everything a four, but I'm gonna give it a four. Scully fingers. It's good. High drinkability. Absolutely. I'm not gonna give it a four. I'll give it a three and a half. Three and a half. The label throws me off. And our Ubering friend will not have one because you might be picked up by him tonight. That's right. He, right. He is uh, sponsoring drink by up Gatorade. tip well. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, yes, uh, we're going to be doing Megan Gregory. What do we know about the Megan Gregory uh, story? We should probably take it back to her, her early years before all this happened, right? Um, from what I understand, is she was born in Florida. Uh, she lived in Florida through her younger years. Mm-hmm. And at some point, they, her family started moving. I believe they all moved up to Maine, and then her father separated that's the opposite of how it usually happens. Usually yeah. go from Maine to Florida. Right, mm, right. And, and he ended up in New York. Um, this kind of caused, um, I guess, some family tension, I family, guess. Yeah. I mean, not that it's anything un- unusual, but it, it's kind of tough to be separated from your from both parents at a young age. Yeah, right. It's hard enough when your family splits, let alone when they split that far apart. Right. Yeah. And at some point in her, her life, she had come in contact with the, uh, I don't know exactly, what was it? Probably started with... Cocaine, cocaine. It was or cocaine, something. Yeah. yeah. While she was down in Florida, she uh, had an addiction to cocaine. Uh, she was actually married while she was down there as well. How old was she? Uh, I know she was young. I think she was seven. nineteen. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Late teens, early twenties. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And young. She, she moved to Maine to try to get her life together and and hopefully try to save her marriage. From what I understand. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, and, and she was separated from her her husband at the time but what, i guess what had happened was she she came to maine to try to get sober and maine is it's a great place but it's not really maine, <laughs> it's not the place not to really go sober. You, it's not yeah. a good place to go if you want to get sober really yeah, uh, i was just thinking the same <laughs> thing you got all kinds of microbreweries we just fucking legalize weed yeah okay that's a <laughs> great right. place to go <laughs> pill farms all over the place yeah dude you ain't kidding and so from what i understand she ends up moving to i, I believe it to be long island where her father's at and because mm-hmm. moving up to maine to clean out wasn't to clean up wasn't working so right, she went so to she the big city to new york and you almost wonder, um, I, I don't think she ever stopped using. I think maybe she tried really, really hard. But I think moving to New York might also bring on other problems. It might put you into the contact, maybe, mm-hmm. of, of people that are dealing mm-hmm. drugs. You know, it's, it seems it, to make sense. Certainly an easier more place to, to find More access them. for it. 
Right, right, and you, and you get to know. I would uh, one would assume more reliable sources, depending so. on the reasons you're using as well. I mean, if it's you know, anxiety related things like that, a big city is certainly isn't going to help those issues. No, so. and a lot of people will move to try to get away from a situation like that. Right. But if the underlying problem is yourself and not your situation. Right then it's not really going to help. Right. So it ends up not working, and she ends up coming back to Maine. Yep. Uh, now, I believe at this she time... She came back with her husband, I No, believe. he stayed in New York no? for a little while, yeah. Oh. And when she came... Uh, he eventually does come up here, though. Oh, that's right. Afterwards, They were, they were yeah. physically separated for a They were physically separated bit. for a while. Uh, once she's up here, though, her mother w w wasn't even going to let her live in the house because she has a younger sibling, mm -hmm. and she didn't want this crazy lifestyle or any of this to be viewed by the younger sibling. So right. she was... I kind of uh, cr uh, crotch hopping, <laughs> couch hopping. <laughs> wow. Someone Adam. was crotch hopping here. A little bit of both. <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah. <laughs> Two sips of beer and I'm losing my fucking mind. <laughs> so she's, you know, living on couches and stuff like that for a while. She does end up in, and she's living in Gardner, which is a town that's really not too far from here. No, right outside of Augusta. Right outside of Augusta. Right outside of the shed, really. Yeah. Hop, skip and a jump. About 40 minutes from here. And now Augusta is, is, is by Maine standards, a semi big city. By other state standards, not very big at all. It's a village. Is, <laughs> it is the state capital of Maine, though, so there's a lot of lot of stuff going on there. The only city people know of when they think of Maine is Portland, and that's yeah. only because it's a really big microbrew town. Yeah. It's a right. it's kind of a college town, too. Right. And then you might know of Bates College in Lewiston, but that's about it. That's about it. So, so random. I, a lot of the Ubers I pick up are from Bates. Not mm -hmm. a single one of them is from Maine. They're all from California, Texas. I had one last week from, like, Barbados. I'm like, how the hell they are you here? They come from fucking California to Maine. Yeah. I'm like, how Why? the hell do you hear about Bates College in Maine? Like, Oh, I got a free ride. <laughs> yeah. It's a really hard school yeah. to get into, too, yeah, which is even weirder. Is. And you know how much it is to go there? It's like sixty k a year. Yeah, that's why they don't tip. <laughs> <laughs> I can't put this on my college loans. <laughs> Sucks to be you. Sorry. So as Megan is, you know, living off of people's couches and stuff, she ends up getting a job at a, uh, I, th I believe it to be like a local like sports pub type of place. Mm -hmm. And this, I believe, is in is in Augusta. Right. Also, and there, you know, she makes a number of friends. Um, a lot of people have positive opinions of her. Uh, I, I say it's a very family oriented like job atmosphere i guess so um yeah she had one of her best friends worked with her um uh, another guy um uh, i believe his name was dan i believe his name was dan yeah yeah he was on the vanish podcast right yeah. that yeah. was the guy that she had interviewed that yeah he was I almost know. like a kind of tried to be like a father figure to her mm -hmm. helped her out as much as he could and he seemed like a really good guy i mean unfortunately kind of enabled her as far as helping her with with financial things like fixing her car paying rent stuff like that which right. never actually gave her money for drugs but if you're giving her money for that the money she has for that is probably going to drugs so right uh, yeah potentially but she was jobless for a while um after after she worked there i believe yeah yeah uh and, and from that point on uh she would she was good friends with uh, a lot of local people and stuff there's a lot of people in the water street area which is a busy Probably the one of the worst parts of Augusta. Right. Maybe and not one of the worst streets. Some point during this time, she got introduced to heroin. Yeah. Which appears. Uh, it's getting bigger over it's the last an epidemic. few years. It's so I, bad. I don't like it. They, they, and they say in this area, uh, Water Street, it's very easy to, to find whatever you want. You can just ask anybody. Yeah, mm -hmm. I just drove down there last weekend, and it was slummy to say the least. Yeah. Sad. Yeah, it's a very sad, depressed area. Of sad. Sad, yeah. Uh, of the of the uh, the community, it's unfortunate because it's right on the uh, Kennebec River. Kind of a beautiful backdrop to uh, could be a, it could be could yeah. Be. So, anyways, kind of get back to this. Uh, her and uh, well, Jason, why don't you tell us? You know this, this story uh, pretty well of her and her friend in the car with with the boyfriend. They're driving around. Yeah. So, uh, her and her boyfriend Sam, and I believe it was her friend Steve, mm -hmm. were driving around um, in, in Augusta. Uh, this was on June 5th, I believe, of 2017. Yes. 17, mm -hmm. yeah. And um, they were driving around, and Sam, uh, they dropped off Steve. And I guess at some point shortly after that, Megan and Sam started having an argument. And she basically said, let me out of the car. I'm done with this. Like Jake finds okay. himself in these situations all the time. Yeah. His Tinder dates do <laughs> wow, not. Wow, what the fuck? Jake's Tinder dates do from? not stick around. <laughs> what Swipe the fuck? left. I literally deleted the app because it wasn't working, and it's my own fault. I get it. 
<laughs> that was a shot for nothing. <laughs> We're going to fight about this Just off so air. Just so you Tinder dates know, Jake does have the Bundy Mobile. There are no passenger side. We're going to fight off air, too. Listen to this. Handcuffs <laughs> off, you know. <laughs> So who's this Sam guy? I don't think we clarified that. Yeah, that's the uh, that's her husband, her boyfriend, boyfriend, whatever. Well, okay, boyfriend, husband, boyfriend, I believe. boyfriend. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so there, she he lets her out, and he I'm like, I'm oh, a, see, the difference between me and him is I just kick him out the door. He, <laughs> he was a little bit more courteous, Jake. Yeah. Fuck that. He del- get, get out. Open the door, bitch. Boom. He handled <laughs> her with delicacy and finesse. Yes. Jake it's, slows down to twenty and says, "Have a good." There's one. a reason. I, there's a reason I had to put a door on my car. <laughs> <laughs> We're not going to get into that story. <laughs> so, uh, so she t- she's off on foot, and he, I'm assuming, goes back back home, right? Yeah, that's from what I understand. So that was on that was on June 5th, um, which is the last, I guess, verified sighting of her. A um, couple of people say on the next day, June 6th, um, she was seen getting in and out of different vehicles. It's probably five or six different vehicles um, throughout the the Augusta area near Edwards house Inn on water street and a few other places like that. But that was the last verified sighting of her was when she got out of Sam's vehicle. There was also a, a friend that stated that she had seen her the following day. Right. Mm-hmm. But I mean, and, and even then it's kind of hard to recollect what days, what so, but who knows? Right. I mean, it is a possibility. Yeah. Well, that's what happens when you drink Adam. <laughs> Good one. <laughs> so, so what ends up happening is the friends and family, they're, they're kind of concerned. Well, they're definitely concerned. But the thing is, is that she has had a reputation of, I don't want to say being wild, but being, you know, doing what she wants to do, you know, to take off and, and kind of do whatever for a few days might not free have been out of her. Free spirit. She's a free spirit. Wouldn't have been drugs. out of her character, right, though? I mean, to just take off. And it seems like the Augusta police originally kind of treated that way, too. I mean, is she clean at this time? Allegedly no, I think anyway. she was still struggling Str- still with struggling. different things. She was trying to get clean, and uh, this damn guy was trying to help her out, but she was still way down on her path. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, sh- so what ends up happening is uh, the police they're they're notified by f- friends and family, but not not a whole lot's done. Yeah, well, I guess Sam um, Sam got a hold of Dan or Dan, I believe, sometime in late afternoon, saying that she was missing, and Dan mm-hmm. basically said. Try to find her. Reach out to people she knows. Get on Facebook. You, right, yeah, get on, get on Facebook. Facebook. If you don't hear from her or see anybody who has by 9 o'clock, go to her mother. And at that point, I guess Sam did go to Megan's mother, and they uh, quote-unquote reported her as a missing person, which the police mm-hmm. didn't take seriously. But here's the thing, Jake, right? It seems to be a common theme oh, with a lot but, of our but, stories. But, yeah. but Jake, but Jake, but here's another thing that we've mentioned before. As a, as a was it 28-year-old woman? Yeah, as an adult, you're, you have the right to disappear. You got the right to disappear. You got the right to just go take off for the weekend, too. Yeah, it's true, and you don't have to let anyone know. But at the same time, now, now you're a missing person. You know what I mean? And I'm not saying she ran away but, on purpose, but it, in, that, in a context like that, and a lot of times we rat on the police, but here's the thing. Put yourself in the in the position of the police here for a second. It's a lot of wasted resources. To find out the person just didn't want to talk to their family for out a weekend. Out of ten missing people, away. you might you might have one that's legitimately missing. Right, exactly. Someone just wanted to go away for a weekend and just shut their phone off. Yeah. You, you've got a woman who has no permanent residence. She's considered a transient. Mm-hmm. And so Who that alone, she could have gone that alone. Right, exactly. That alone. You have the right to disappear, to do whatever you want. And it's only been uh, a short period Two, of time. Two, three days. Yeah. Right. Now, this goes on. They don't really find anything. Now, the family and, and, and uh, Steve, the friend, they end up organizing or Dave, Dan, Dan, Dan. Dan. Uh, they, <laughs> she didn't get the names. Gonna straight. go through all the fucking names. You're only, two, you're only a beer in, bro. So they uh, they start to organize, you know, search. Search parties, you know, a very common thing to for family and friends right. to do, so yep. something like this. Uh, Sam's with him looking, and Sam ends up having to take off to go interview somebody or, or in maybe, regards maybe to get drugs or something. Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? Maybe. But uh, if there's one, there's always another. Well, that's the thing is, as soon as he takes off, the friend is left with uh, her whole group of. Of other acquaintances, dr- drug, they're either drug addicts or recovering drug addicts, but mm-hmm. they're all into the drug scene, and they kind of semi-circle around him and they say, "Hey, look, she's been messing around with these New York City dealers." Yeah, she's been driving them around, helping them sell drugs, picking them up, and all th- this stuff. Jake, tell us about the epidemic the state has of people coming from all over the place to sell to bring drugs here. 
oh, dude, it's awful. They'll rent cars. They'll come up and they'll just they'll hang out for a couple days and they'll disappear. Sometimes they'll hang you know out for I mean? months. They'll take a room in, in some shitty hotel. Yeah, mm-hmm. and, and kind of do something similar to what was going on over that, you know, over with uh, Megan Gregory. Yeah, yeah. In the words of our ex-governor, uh, Governor LePage, he said that we have guys named D-Money in uh, D-Train coming from New York and, and Connecticut. And don't, Shifty. Or, or and Shifty. was it Swifty? Let's yeah. not forget remember. Shifty. And they're coming from New York and, and Connecticut and impregnating our young white women. That's well, what. thank you, Jason. I'm going to have to bleep <laughs> all of that out. Well, that's what the governor said. We'll get they it did. in post. These are the say. words of of the former governor, <laughs> and not of Jason. We'll, we'll get it in post. Or Don't of worry. the shed. Or of the shed. But but no, they do not. Th- these words do not officially represent the shed. <laughs> but people, you know, will come up to Maine. They'll find a young a young drug addict type mm-hmm. woman that they maybe already know. And, and to go touch on something that I had said earlier, maybe these are people that she was associated with from her New York days. It's possible. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. Who knows? But. Maybe not, but well, if you're if you leave to try to clean your life up, and then you come back to try to clean your life up again, you're going down there. You're in the same shit. Of course, you're going to meet people who are into drugs, down right? In and that like area. like I was saying earlier, bigger people, maybe potentially people that are right. Well, that's a major shipping point, in New York City, and it's a, it's one of the largest cities in the United States. Yeah. I mean, of course, there's going to be easier access and bigger people in the game. But you it's, know what I mean? It's believed that she was, you know. With these people, she was driving them around mm-hmm. because if you're you're not gonna come up to Maine in your Cadillac and 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 start no you know what you're gonna do you're gonna go rent a 2017 Nissan Altima and smoke blunts the entire way and then you're gonna wreck it and then it's <laughs> gonna it show up at my fucking body <laughs> shop and I'm gonna have to repair it and I'm never gonna be able to get the stench out and then Enterprise <laughs> is gonna send it back because it stinks and a lot of people believe that. She was she was driving these she was driving these people around right, but she and, had her own car. She didn't rent one. She was smart about it. If uh, I had to guess, I'd say that she probably became acquainted with them somehow, and then she probably one day needed a bag of heroin or whatever, and said, "Hey, can I get this till Thursday or something?" And they probably said, "I got an idea. Yeah, you can earn it. You can earn it. Yeah, yeah and make that's it easy where just, that turns. Yep, even the more minute dark. You, the minute you owe them, you owe them. So." Mm. Now, where French, yeah, he's he's looking at different things. He's he's online. He's looking at stuff, and they find something kind of interesting. I think it's one day while they're at, at work, uh, on the web about. Uh, it's a, it's a United States prostitution website kind of deal. Kind of <laughs> kind of deal. Jake has Jake. Has okay, a can we sidetrack just for just a little for, bit? Because I have a really I have a really funny story. We'll give, I we'll bet you do. Jason. We'll, we'll give you a minute oh, for this Jesus. one. <laughs> okay, so I got a message. I'm on a bunch of different Facebook groups that have to do with different things that I'm interested in. And one of the guy, I had, I had shipped, no, well, that too. But I had shipped a bunch of car parts to Poland to help some guy out. He was building an, a, a Saab. And he messages me earlier and starts asking me a bunch of questions in halfway broken English. And it basically amounted to how much is Coke? How much is speed? How much is this, that, whatever? And I go, I have no idea. I, I have nothing to do with any of that. And he goes, okay, well. Long story short, he's asking me about if there's like a way he can get prostitutes here. And I'm like, of course you can. But I, I don't ask me. You know what I mean? <laughs> and he sends me a link to a website that's all prostitutes in Poland. <laughs> like you can scroll through it and like pick one. <laughs> Unreal. Anyway. So what, when are you moving to Poland? <laughs> my book, my flight is booked for next Thursday. <laughs> Bye, Jake. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so anyway, so they find uh, an image of a of a woman on one of those great websites, right? Yep, one and of these fantastic websites. As, now she's she, as an escort, you know, an escort website. They're Working even girl. verified with PayPal. You can pay with your credit card. <laughs> uh, call me when you can do Venmo. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, good point. You can rent Jake through Patreon. <laughs> <laughs> That's gonna be one of our tiers, ten dollars a month. <laughs> Jake and a fried steak dinner. <laughs> but you provide the steak. <laughs> so anyways, um, <laughs> what the hell was I with this? Yeah, so she was at the bar. Um, uh, her friends were at the bar, and they were looking at this back page website. Mm-hmm. And I uh, found a girl who looked and was described similar to how Megan is. So her friends had actually been under the impression that she was probably selling herself for drugs or for these dealers or or whatever and um dan actually didn't believe it until he saw this and he came pretty convinced that's what happened so and i think that he even asked sam yeah he did ask sam at one point and sam confirmed that he that she was um prostituting well he denied it initially and then after everything came to well not i can't say everything came to a head but when she was like really gone for a while he goes yeah she was in the middle of this doing that kind of thing Yeah. yeah 
Now, Jake, is it possible that maybe they th- these drug dealers put her onto it? If if you're gonna go down the you know, that something happened with her with drug dealers. Well, I mean, like Jason said earlier, if it turns out that she's like, oh, can I get a bag or whatever till Thursday? Okay, well, you know what? Instead of just paying us, you're going to earn it. Yeah. And we're going to make you do whatever. And that's probably why she ended up on the website. So a lot of people believe that she could have been anywhere between Maine and, and New York. From right? what I understand, the, the police under, you know, thought that. They, they didn't actually launch a legitimate missing persons investigation because they said she... Most likely went with the dealers to New York. She's going to work off a debt and she'll be back. And not only that, but they said that she was under surveillance. So they were confident that she was in New York. Yeah. Really? Yeah. She had been under surveillance for, I don't know exactly how long at that point, but when she had went missing, the police had supposedly told the search party and the people that were trying to help find her. They were like, listen, we've been watching her. We know what's going on with her. She's more than likely in New York with these dealers. They had confronted her at a McDonald's. Like yeah, it was they did. Pillsbury or something like that. Yeah, and then she had got, she, I had read something that she had gone back to the dealers or her friends or something and had told someone that she got um, stopped by the police and she, questioned. She told her friend, uh, right. Dan, right? Dan. Okay. We should get a hold of Dan. You know, now that I'm thinking about that, we should get a hold of Dan. Who he looks like he'd be. Hey, Dan, if you're listening, hit us up. Hit us up. Be very interested to hear your side of the story. I know I've already especially heard him with on the, the podcast. Recent yeah. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Especially with the recent developments, this would be a good time to take a break. Let's take a yeah, quick beer. Break. All right, sounds good to me. That's why I asked you to hand me a second one. Of course. It's appropriate. Second one since uh, since the break, that is. <laughs> Maybe. 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 We'll let you decide. Well, exactly. We'll let the listeners decide. We'll let them speculate while we speculate a little here. Now, some of the uh, – there was a friend that was in, the, in, that, in that area where she was last seen because the police said – we know she went to the hotel. We do know that for sure because we do have that on, on surveillance or such. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, somebody, a friend of hers, had made a post on Facebook, I think later that night or the next day, stating, did you hear, did anybody hear uh, somebody screaming out back of, was it the uh, was Edward Edwards Inn? Yeah, something like that, yeah. Mm-hmm. It sounded like somebody was getting beat, and, and this person even alluded to saying that they thought it was Megan. And they wow. saw them, a beaten body being tossed into a pickup truck, basically. Yeah, that's what they stated. Wow. So that kind of leads to, you know, as it's kind of as time goes on, uh, 2018 goes on, uh, and then it brings us, you know, they're still looking for her. Well, it's just speculation. It's everybody right. in the city has a different theory, and right. But the police are not really doing much. They kind of still are like she's probably doing whatever mm-hmm. somewhere else. Well, yeah. Well, what do they do in three months when she's gone? Nothing? Well, the unfortunate so? part of this world is that if you're a drug addict and you go missing, the police don't give a fuck. Yeah, it's one less drug addict for them to deal with. Is how they look at it. Yeah. Yeah, you're not wrong, and to and to some extent, and I'm not going to sit here and shit on drug addicts. Some of the, no. you know these people, no, no. these people de- desperately need help. Yeah, but, definitely, but, human beings. Yeah, but they also put themselves in that situation to some extent too. So I can I can almost see why the police would feel that way, but it still doesn't make it right. You know what I mean? Because right. these people do need help. They do, right? But the police, you know, are look at you as less than a human if you have those issues. So. Oh, absolutely. And it got to a point where they almost didn't want to hear anything more of it. Yeah, they were just kind of, and it almost and it left the the friends and the family to. What's that grin about? <laughs> I, I don't want to talk about it. I don't left, want to talk about left it. Left the friends and the family uh, to kind of do their own private searching. Nothing ever came up. They would get little leads. Um, I believe even the family might have even gotten some phone calls. Yeah, well, they thought that they they'd heard rumors that she was prostituting in Portland and Lewiston, and, and they oh, did follow- they find the website? <laughs> no, they, but they would follow up on these leads. <laughs> At least the friend would. He would drive down here to the to the old dirtiest of the dirty Lou. Ew. Yeah. Ew. I feel ew. cruddy just saying that. Yeah. And I feel cruddy just living there. <laughs> <laughs> you live in the nice end of the Lou. I do live in the nice part of of the Lou. Of the Lou. <laughs> Ugh, that place sucks. So this is another part. You see, everybody says that. Anyway, yeah, <laughs> but but you know, so we can imagine this guy was probably looking for her around, right? The Tree Streets, well, Lisbon it, Street. Yeah, well, it would get, would be a good place to look between Lewiston, Portland, Bangor, and Augusta. Yeah, so they were they were getting all these leads that would 
<laughs> She's too pretty to be a loose than prostitute. I can tell you that. <laughs> wow. <laughs> hey, listen, they have some pretty decent decent ones as you start to work your way up Lisbon Street. Like once you hit Sullivan Tire, it's not so bad. You know what I mean? <laughs> By the time you get to Paris Adult Bookstore, they don't even have fucking teeth. <laughs> yeah, that, that's where you just completely lose interest. <laughs> if you get real desperate, you can go behind like where the Ella Bean Call Center is in the hospital. <laughs> that's where it gets no, really gross. If you get that desperate, just give yourself a fistful of knuckle children and call it a day. <laughs> <laughs> but what do you do with them? <laughs> what do you do? <laughs> well, you said give yourself a fistful. So, okay, I have a fistful. What happens with it? Uh, <laughs> Moving on. Yeah. We're going to give you a napkin and we'll move on with the story. <laughs> Things getting a little hot and heavy in the shed here. <laughs> Holy shit. Jesus Christ. Adam. I can't even make Keep eye going. contact with this guy. Thank God this is an audio podcast. Well, it wouldn't be a problem if he wasn't trying to make eye contact while eating a banana. <laughs> <laughs> we do got to get cameras in here, Jake. <laughs> uh, all right. Keep going. So I guess we, uh, could, we can kind of go to recent events because nothing really comes up in the two years that she's missing. Yeah, nothing. Just different speculation. So... The beginning of uh, April of 2019, um, uh, remains were found in a heavy wood, wooded, heavily wooded area um, near the Kushnock Bridge in Augusta. I believe it was like April 7th. And now this area is is really the same area where she was last seen. Yeah, like the same street, I'm pretty sure. I, yeah, in the oh, Washington wow. Street area. So it's like she was last seen here. You, The, the police could have at least looked... Where if she they, was last seen? If they would have done like they would in a normal investigation and just thrown some scent dogs out, you know, in her last spot, they would have found her probably in ten minutes. Like, it's, but they didn't want to do the investigation. No, do you think she was dumped there like that night? Do you th- was she dumped there? Now, they, I don't now, know. now, okay, let's take it to that because here's the thing: two years later, and Jake and I watched a body decompose on YouTube the other day. This thing. Wow. Okay. Yep. Well, no, we did. Well, no, you're right. Jake, this body. No, this I is know. only a porn. <laughs> <laughs> it was kind of hot. <laughs> <laughs> they say he makes the body decompose faster. Yeah. Well, this. Um, what what time? What time of year did she go? Did she? It was October. Either way, she's gone for two years. What they right. would have found would have been just skeletal remains and clothes and clothes, whatever's in her pockets and whatever she had in her hands. Right. Yeah. Well, on the 24th, which was a week and two and a half weeks after they found the body, they did identify it as Megan Gregory. And they said that um, evidence at the scene indicates that her death wasn't suspicious and that her remains had been there since she was reported missing two years ago. You guys, this was just last week. Yeah, just last week. Just last week. Just last week. And they found her where she was last seen. Go figure. Like you said, if they would have just sent sent dogs out, it probably would have been fine. Not to mention, I mean, that, that's a pretty heavily trafficked area. I mean, I don't know how far into the bushes or the woods she was. But. Well, here's the thing with Augusta is that you can be in the city and then out into a heavily wooded area right. pretty quick. Oh, Just, yeah. You can, t- you can walk off of a busy city street and, and into in the, the woods. woods. Oh, well, I think sure. from what I had read, too, she was found, like, beyond some sand pits and stuff. So she was at least a decent ways off the main road. So Just, someone would have had to haul her off. Yeah. Or could she have gone there on her own? It's very possible. Yeah, I mean, Is it possible that she overdosed and just well, kind of wandered? Well, let's go back to what Jason said. No, I don't want to see what you think here, Jake. They, they say that nothing appeared to be suspicious. Right. What does that mean? That's a good question. What does that mean to you? Well, to me, it seems like if this person, if Megan just wandered off, right, she would have had to have wandered off within the, la- the last couple of days she was seen, obviously. So she had, would have had to have been there for a couple of years at this point because they just found her body last week, April 24th right. of 2019. At that point, to me, if you've been outside for two years, you probably have just skin and bones. And like you said, no, probably no skin. Clo- well, OK, you're right. Bones and just clothes and physical possessions. Right. Because there's no real body to examine because there really isn't a bullet know. in her skull does it means it it wasn't right, right that's a murder really that's the thing she could have been strangled my my right. my guess is that they probably found uh either heroin or a needle or something like that near her that led them to believe overdose but like adam just said if, it, if she was strangled would they even be able to tell if it was just bones i mean this it's not like you know there's unless physical the, wounds unless on. the person was choking her so hard that they fractured a bone well let's okay I mean, just for um just for argument's sake let's say she was the one being beat to a pulp behind the hotel would they be able to tell you would not be able to tell well, i would but imagine would unless you? something what was if, but, 
unless, unless something was, was broken, broken, unless some, right. there was a bone broken. So, you know, they'll look at everything, these, these uh, uh, what are they called, forensic pathologists. Yeah. You're, so you get stabbed with a knife, and mm-hmm. it makes a, a gash on a bone. They're going to find that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They're right. going to find that. Of course, if you get shot, they're going to find a bullet hole. Right. What if you're strangled, and you're out, you know, for two years, or beaten to death, and nothing's, like, broken? Yeah. My... my th- my thinking on that, though, is that these guys that she was supposedly involved with, if they were going to kill her, it likely would have just been a bullet to the head. End of it. They don't seem like the type who are going to mess around with a body or anything Pretty like that. Pretty quick to strangle somebody, though, when it's quiet. Yeah, but that just it seems not like their type of... Usually, strangulation is a crime of passion. Mm, that's well, true. Okay, true, but... There was rumors that people had heard someone screaming behind the, behind the hotel. But the being Edwards, beat. The Edwards Inn, yeah, right. So... Probably wouldn't sh- wouldn't have shot her, and if they had shot her, I would imagine it would have come out that there was a, a bullet wound in the head, or you, there was some right. sort of some sort of skull fracture. Right. But that's why I'm saying is like I, I think it was probably an overdose because if they were to kill her, I think they would have just shot her. Now, like Adam said, do you do you think they found needles on her maybe, or found some sort of evidence? I would that's imagine my they guess. find her. They found her her bones and her clothes. But the thing is, right? even when she was alive, it wasn't that unusual to find needles and drugs with her because right. she was a drug addict. And unfortunately, and I hate to say this, but and I'm not being Maine, a dick, but no, no, you're not. And I'm, like I said, I hate to say this, but unfortunately, Maine has been a really it just keeps getting worse with the heroin thing that's going on. Right. People people well, you know and love that you would never suspect are on these crazy drugs, and needles are not uncommon to find in some areas, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. And my question to you guys would be, you know, the police in the early going, they took this very light. Right. She doesn't have a permanent residence. She's known for doing irrational things. This is just one of those. But now, despite all of that, sorry, but despite all of that, when you listen to the Vanish podcast when they interviewed Dan, Dan made her out like she was a super sweet, caring, always took care of everyone else but herself type of person. Well, it's funny because I actually I gave uh, an Uber ride to a girl in Augusta who actually lived right up the street from where this was found. Oh, really? And she had a um, she had a run in with Megan Gregory. Her um, this girl, her boyfriend had fractured her skull and she was in the ER. And Megan Gregory, who didn't even know this woman, came up to her and was like, you know, I know what happened. It's going to be okay. Like, I've been through this myself and, and yada, yada. So she does seem like, a, you know, a caring person. Even though she didn't know the woman, she wanted to let her know right. that she wasn't alone. So Right. But my question is, if the police did not care in the early going to even search for her whatsoever, she's, she's the type to run off, she's the type to do whatever, wouldn't it be uh, typical of them to just dismiss this as a drug overdose? I think so too. I would, yeah. You know yeah, what I mean? I would think so. A drug yeah. overdose would be the easiest way for the police to just cover write the tracks it off and on move the on. Fact that they dropped the ball on it. Well, but. it's two years after the fact now. But did and... they drop the ball? Did they? Do you think they did? I think so. I mean, they were severely convinced that she was in New York with these guys, and quite clearly she wasn't. So, but at the same time, if it, if it's tip, and I'm not I'm not justifying, but if they've been dealing with so many of these cases, it, if it's a typical thing that these people come up from New York or wherever and they bring drugs up and they hire these girls to drive them around or even just these people to drive them around, whatever. It doesn't even have to be specifically women. But if they hire all these people, wouldn't it make sense that these people would go back to New York with them to pick up more and come back? Yeah. Because these people would have to come up on trains and if they make good friends with the person that's driving them around. Conquered buses, man. That's what they did. That's what they did. Buses. Yeah, they bus and Amtrak. Shifty yeah. and D-Money come up on buses. I'll remember that the next time I'm taking a trip down to fucking Boston on the Amtrak. <laughs> no, but, my, I mean, you're right, but what I'm thinking is that um, the police need to maybe treat these cases separately instead of lumping them all together. Because sometimes, it, oh, well, we've been through this before, but this is different. So if you would have done even a little bit of research or investigation, you would have probably found i mean like we said with the dogs they would have probably found her in 10 minutes from where she was Mm -hmm. where she was last seen so and it seems like you know to those that have been following us from the beginning thank you thank thank you yeah and but it's if it's a common theme in a lot of our stories that the police drop the ball they just or they just don't seem to give it enough of a shit and Uh, it just seems that way we're not accusing anyone of anything i mean a missing person's case is a lot of resources so and we're not cops we don't know what it's like right Right. and you know departments have limited resources especially in not so big cities so it's like right you know if, if 
if you're not 100% sure or, or, you know, if somebody who has a history of running away or whatnot, they're not going to investigate that seriously because that's a lot of resources and, and money that is, quote, unquote, wasted. See, so. and what's kind of crazy, well, not really crazy, but you know what's interesting about this one is Megan didn't have, like, a – a, a history of running away for extended periods of time, but right. if she got into a fight with her boyfriend Sam, she would disappear for five or six hours and, and being come a back transient and be whatever. didn't help either because no, not at all. Uh, not having a, a residence where they say, well, she didn't show up at home right. today. She well, don't have a permanent right. home. Like, yeah. She could be right. one of twenty different places, and right. the police aren't gonna think it's any weirder if she was at any of those. So. And I remember li- when I was listening to um, to that podcast. They had mentioned something about she, she when she was doing the prostitution thing on that website. She, it, it seemed like she would create fights to leave the situation she was that, in and go a, take care of. Things. Yeah, that was you a speculative I mean? thing run that her, she would run her business. Basically. I would think that if you were in a relationship with somebody you really cared about, maybe creating a a fight or an argument almost like would be almost your way of trying to be able to go out and justify what you're doing, I guess. We like to call that stirring turds in the shed. <laughs> if, you're, if you're stirring turds, you can make for a double life. You also have a really big bucket with a lot of soft turds. Well, you might. And this turd got real soft because mm-hmm. things went real bad for her. You could just call it diarrhea. Well, speaking of soft turds, guys, I should not have trusted that fart. <laughs> <laughs> it's that tuna sandwich. You know, before we, we recorded, you know, he, uh, Jason was telling me, he goes, why is it that after my farts dry, my ass itches? <laughs> and back to the it's story. A legitimate question, guys. <laughs> Asking the important. Please one. email us back <laughs> in on that one. <laughs> Let's yeah, get serious. So, so, what's your what's your theory on this? I don't know, man. Here's the thing. I think that a lot of these guys they they typically would have shot her. Um, it does make sense for them to, if they would have killed her to just dispose of her. Kind of out back, kind of like they did, and taken off. My question that I, that keeps coming to me is, what would have provoked her to walk out there? I know oh, she's high, but still, what would have made her to, you know? Okay, so here's my theory. The reason why I think she went back there is, I think I I don't nobody really knows what her and Sam fought about, but her and Sam had a fight, so maybe she wanted to go use. Maybe she didn't want to go to one of the places where they typically couch surf because it, she didn't want Sam finding her. So maybe she just went out in the backwoods. I mean, um, you know, it probably wasn't too, too cold at that time. So she might have went out there and used and just... October? I don't know. It's pretty cold in October. In the beginning, it's usually not too bad. Yeah. I mean, I don't... I mean, depending, depending on, on the yeah, day, yeah. Yeah, depending yeah. on the day. All right. But yeah, so she might have went out behind the sand pits and been like, I'm going to use. I'm going to settle down for a little bit. I don't want Sam finding me. And then... We'll go from there. It's not like she planned on overdosing. So, yeah, I don't think anyone plans on overdosing. Right. So I, I'm thinking that she probably went back there to use and just get away, and it ended up happening. So what are the odds somebody could have brought her back there? Maybe some, maybe like you know, they kind of. Maybe it was a Tinder date. Well, <laughs> to kind of go with the uh, the other thought it that, that it could have been. It was what, Uber, a, what if these the last? Uber well, what ride. if these New York ne- these New York drug dealers found out that she had talked to the police at some it point? It was Jason. The Uber driver. <laughs> <laughs> they were pissed, and they brought her back there and, and killed her and then took off. Isn't that a possibility? It's possible. I just don't mm. see it. Yeah. Well, I, I, t- I actually tend to, or tend to think that it was probably a self-inflicted, unfortunate accident. Yeah. I, I would disagree with both of you in that. I, I really feel that someone did something to her because just, just from what you what you hear about her, she seems like a really caring person. And she was very invested in her relationships. Accidents she's happen had a hard to time. People, though. Well, yeah. right, but I don't know. I don't know. Maybe maybe it's just the soft the soft part of me that's I just mean, like I want to believe that something happened to her just because it seems like overdosing or suicide would just be a sadder. You outcome. know, those maybe because of all the stuff she was going through. Maybe. I mean, it's it's not unheard of for people to. You know, drink a little more when they're going through a hard time. Or smoke a little up. more when they're going through a hard time. So Cheers. She was going through a lot of stuff. Maybe she 
She overdid it. That was just thinking that as I'm sitting here. I'm like, you know what? Maybe she got into that argument with Sam. This is why I'm on she my 85th out. beer of the night. <laughs> <laughs> Might have been dealing with some shit with the New York guys and right. just a didn't lot know of how shit. To get out and it was just like, I need to right. get super fucking high. And hey, I'm almost 30 and my life's a fucking disaster. Yeah. Really? And this is right around the time that fentanyl was coming around too. So yeah, yeah. Right. Her, who knows? Heroin overdoses were going through the roof around this time. It's true. I remember. Yeah, it was all all in the news constantly. Mm. Main average more than an overdose death a day last year. That's awful. Yeah. That's awful. I mean, it's very possible that she just went out there, did a little more, maybe had done something mm-hmm. that she didn't fully understand what she was doing. That's 365 people who overdosed in a year. That's a lo- It doesn't sound like a lot when you really like, when you look at the grand picture, but, man, that's a lot of nobody, people. Nobody lives here. Right. Well, when you look at Maine, so, there's maybe a million people here. When 1. you think 1. 3 365 million. people overdosed. Last year or wh- whatever year it was, that's crazy. There's no need for that. Yeah. So I think the thing is, is that for two years, people expected this to to become some kind of crazy murder case to be linked to the big city of New York. Mm-hmm. People expected this story to be this giant elaborate thing. And, and here we are painting a picture of a giant elaborate thing. But the truth is, is she probably just stumbled off and ended up dying in the... I still want to fight you on it. I still think something happened to her, and we will never find out exactly what happened to her, in what, my opinion. What, what but could I, have happened? I do think, I think someone... Well, just I feel this way because of that Facebook post, and just the way, the way I had heard Dan talking on the Vanish podcast, we plugged it like six times in this, but it just doesn't seem right. Like, she... She's working with these people from out of state, bringing in high dollar drugs. Let's be honest. Maybe, maybe they found out she had been stopped by police. Maybe she had said, "I'm." Um, there was there was another rumor, or another rumor, but uh, another uh, another theory that maybe they had tried to sell her into the prostitution ring, and they were going to take her back to New York. Right, and yep. she resisted. Mm-hmm. So that to me seems more likely, seeing she was on that website. But even that would have been, would have been you know highly I mean? speculative. Well, right, but the, but it's no more speculative than she walked off into the woods and overdosed. That's true. That's you true. You know what I mean? To me, just given the circumstances, that seems more likely that something horrible happened to her rather than her just walking off. And it's possible that when she, so if something happened to her, it's possible that she had something on her, and maybe they found that when they found her body. Yeah, or that, what was left. And at this point, I feel like the the Augusta police are done with this. Uh, I would. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna speculate for them. But I would say, yeah, you're right. Who knows if they just wanted to get rid of it, or they're just happy that it's. Good. Who knows? But it just seems it, like it's, it just seems to me. And of course, you know, this is speculative. That from the get go, they've been wanting to wipe this off their plate. So it's real quick to just map drug overdose. Peep, done. Yeah. Well, if the Augusta police is gonna come after us, I hope they go to your house. <laughs> I'm not accusing anyone of I'm shit. I'm not. Oh, well, I'm not. I'm just saying that's just how things things look. Yeah, right, right I, Jason? I, I agree. Mean, yeah. Prove us otherwise, you know, if, you know, really look into this. this. The only interesting thing to me is that the medical examiner hasn't determined the cause of death, but they say the evidence at the scene uh, made it not suspicious. So I don't know how quickly she would have died from an overdose. I don't know how quickly heroin kicks in. Maybe they found a needle clinched in her hand. Like it's uh, what was like. Yeah, it's possible. So, yeah, I mean, we don't even know what they found with her. Because I agree with you. If they found a needle and drugs there, I mean, okay, she may have had a needle and drugs. Doesn't mean she doesn't mean she, she did it. On it. But right. right. But um, she may have been intending to later or something. But right. well, it's also possible that she she shot up or she did whatever, put it in her pocket, and then sacked the fuck out and died. Yeah. Yeah. So who yeah. knows? I mean, even to go to Maura Murray, a lot of people think that she hit her head in that accident and kind of stumbled off into the woods. And, and yeah, it doesn't take much when you hit your head. And, and here's another you thing You get tired to the, real quick. Oh, I'm going to lay down. Don't do that. No. And, and here's another thing. An area can be searched several times and they don't find the body. And then all of a sudden, oh, let's go look this area for the third time or fourth time. And then they find the body. Right. Especially in so, a heavy, heavily wooded area. I mean, so oh, who knows? Sure. Behind every tree, in every tree. I mean, right. in holes, anything could be an issue yeah especially in maine where leaves fall and stuff every yeah. year it's like yeah and, it, and it's especially this time like, of year yeah. it yeah. seems like all of oh, these that things are happening around october yeah yeah so so leaves falling i'm actually surprised she wasn't covered i mean 
it may have been even harder to find her. I don't know how, how out in the open her body was. but So Megan Gregory was either murdered or overdosed. Changed my mind. Let us know what you guys think. Shoot us an email on what you guys think. Because um, this is a this is a current story. This is I would like to say it's still developing. Um, I'm glad. I would say it's still developing. We're, I'm hoping there's going to be more articles about yeah. it in the next coming couple months. Seeing they just found her body like a week ago. Maybe we end up with a little update. Hopefully on this. Yeah. But hopefully. I will say that I am very happy that they found her remains. I wish they would have found it after the podcast. This is one of the because <laughs> few... it kind of like was kind of weird. Like we're getting ready to do this, and I'm kind of thinking one direction, and then this. Mm. Is like a totally. I emailed Adam at work, wow. and I was like, "Um, they just found Megan Gregory." Yeah, right. <laughs> like, hmm, changed our whole fucking story. Here we go. But I'm glad they found her. I'm glad there's some closure for the family. Yeah, absolutely. And for uh, you know her good friends in the Gardner Augusta area. Yeah. Um. Again, a, a, another tragic potential overdose. Either way, drugs are involved in this, and uh, and it's very sad. And it does take lives. No, uh, nobody so. should be subject to that. And if you, anyone is struggling with an addiction of some sort, seek some help. Yeah. yeah if, Do uh, it for yourself. Before you guys get into social media, if you you or somebody you love is um, having addiction issues, you can call a 24-7 rehab hotline, which is 888-459-5511. Thanks for sharing that. That was, that was perfect. 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 And uh, if you like our podcast and you got something to say to us, there's many ways you can do it. Uh, you can find us on Facebook at Stories from the Shed, Instagram. Stories from the Shed podcast, YouTube, Stories from the Shed podcast, Twitter, Stories from Shed. Thank you. <laughs> and, of course, our Gmail, which we love, which is uh, sftspodcast at gmail.com. Thank you for listening, guys. Thank you for coming back. Anytime. Jason. And uh, that's a wrap. Have a good night. Have, Have a good, good night. night. Bye. Till next week.